On today's episode, Never Not Working, of course, we break down a bunch of the matchups, the starts of the week, and another thrilling chapter of Jason's Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. Please subscribe to this channel, tell your friends, and enjoy the show. Today's show is sponsored by Head & Shoulder Scalp Shield Technology. Regular use of Head & Shoulder Scalp Shield provides a continuous and visible shield of protection against dandruff, itch, and dryness, renewing your protection with every wash. Get up to 100% dandruff protection that's never not working with Head & Shoulder Scalp Shield Technology available at walmart.com. And there's big news in shoes. Rothy's is now selling men's sneakers and men's driving loafers, but even more big news they just launched premium merino wool shoes for the fall. The wool is nature's perfect material. It's soft, it's comfortable, it's machine washable and sustainable. We're checking all the boxes over here. I have a pair of these. They are excellent. They are comfortable right out of the box. I think that they look better than most of my sneakers. Oh, they're sharp. And they're so comfortable. Uh, and don't just take our word for it. Esquire says pick up a pair of Rothy's men's shoes before they sell out. Forbes calls Rothy's men's shoes a travel must-have. And CNN says Rothy's men's shoes are comfortable to wear right out of the box. To help you welcome fall season in style, Rothy's is doing something special. That's right. They gave us the chance to share a super rare opportunity with our listeners for a limited time. Right now, you can get $20 off your first purchase at rothys.com slash footballers. That's R-O-T-H-Y-S dot com slash footballers head to rothys dot com slash footballers to find your new favorites today welcome to the fantasy footballers podcast with your hosts andy holloway jason moore and mike wright ah! Welcome in. It's football time. Oh, yeah. Now, was that strategic or was that a last minute remembering? That was, I didn't know how the timing was going to work with you doing the intro. From home. Yes. And so I didn't want to step on your shoes. So I gave it a, I felt, I got a, I felt like Frank Sinatra. Oh, that was I, casual. It's like a, it's your, you're supposed to be singing, but you're just talking. Mm -hmm. You're like, it's football time. Like a baby, it's cold outside thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. That was what I, I like. That I like that. You got to change <laughs> it, was, it up. It was the coolest. It's football time you've ever done. Like that is definitely what the cool kids do when they say it's football time. Uh, welcome into the fantasy footballers, Andy, Mike, and Jason. Back with you. Never not working. News to talk about. And week nine. Week nine. It's here. Fantasy forecast part one. We got starts of the week. We got the boom, boom kicker. Oh, oh it's going to be a show. I it's going to be a show. Can't yeah. wait for the boom, boom. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's it's important. You know, I'm barely clothed on top of a freighter. We'll see where the story <laughs> takes us. Uh, you have a staff of writers this year, I understand. So this, uh, we have, yeah, we how have dare you? 22 writers for uh -huh. um, the 17 week season. And I think they're doing a, a great job. Trying to get it renewed for next year. I mean, I, I imagine that'll well, happen. Well, we've already been picked up. Three more seasons. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's oh, a no. massive hit. <laughs> uh, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers, Twitter at the FF Ballers. I want to remind everybody if you want to be a part of supporting the show and get a bonus weekly episode, a bunch of premium perks, access bonus. to things like the Stream Finder tool, you can go to jointhefoot.com. It's that easy. Just head over there, jointhefoot.com, become a part of the Foot Clan. And uh, we'll love you for all of time. I mean, that's the that's the exchange that we make with you. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to say congrats to Chris Maloney, who won the signed Darren Waller jersey. Congratulations. Congrats. congrats. Uh, uh, we'll do another giveaway here soon. Let's jump into the show. Never not working. Presented by Head & Shoulders, Scalp Shield Technology. Available at Walmart. Oh, I love this segment. It has been, um, I think, really advantageous for our listenership and for fantasy players to get a leg up every week. And if you compile and, and put all of these things together into your overall strategy, I think it's going to benefit you for years to come. Yeah, and part of, part of never not working is when you... Uh, when you get a thread coming off that sweater, you got to keep pulling it. Find oh. out, you know, uh, but 
where it leads. But then you that's come undone. You, <laughs> well, yeah, that's how you I end mean. up naked on a freighter, buddy. <laughs> exactly. And you get picked up for multiple seasons. Last week, uh, Andy, you brought up that Ben Roethlisberger had completed 25.8% of his pass attempts over 20 yards, which is really what's going on with Chase Claypool's breakout ability. He's hindering that ability. And so it, it's, it's indicative of, I think, m more failure in the future this year with Big Ben. So we wanted to see dive deep, you know, never stop working over here and look at um, other quarterbacks who might be affecting their teams or certain players because of one of the places. We're looking at deep passes, intermediate passes, short passes um, to see if there are outliers. And and this matters, right? Like um, Kyler, his deep passes, he's connecting 61% of his deep passes, even though he's not throwing a ton. That's the best mark ever. And you see some uh, fantasy relevance, uh, you know, from week to week with all the wide receivers there. Um, so we want to say, okay, are there quarterbacks that are maybe causing us to have more stay away information? Let's start with Sam Darnold. Oh, let's not. He is the only quarterback below the league average in all four areas of the field. Deep, intermediate, short, behind the line of scrimmage. How, how are you? How can you be below average? <laughs> Throwing behind the line of scrimmage. Well, I mean, t to be fair, average, I mean, is just all – someone has to be below average, otherwise there isn't an average. But I feel like if in the world of professional quarterbacking, everyone should be – like, there should be great and then just – and an average. Well, look, he's how are you below? He's above average if you include all the way down to the high school level. I am sure, but in the NFL, he is below average. Maybe on intermediate throws, he has a forty-seven percent completion rate. The league average is sixty percent. DJ Moore has the second most intermediate targets in the NFL, but a forty-eight percent catch rate, which is eighty-third. So this is this is the problem for DJ Moore. We talked about this with kind of Robbie Anderson and when all of the wide receivers can't catch your passes. Right. It's not the wide receivers. <laughs> it's not. No. It's so same Darnold. It's same Darnold. And so he is one concern where going forward, if you're still waiting for the DJ Moore breakout, um, I, I think it's gonna be difficult to do with Sam Darnold. And I, I think it's already been proven. Like Teddy Bridgewater was better. Right, like last year, he supported three thousand yard receivers. He was better than Sam Donald. They traded a lot to to upgrade, and they downgraded. So, sorry, Carolina. At least your defense is good. Let's look at Justin Herbert. The he's had a huge difference from last year to this year because this year he is throwing way shorter passes. Last year he was the master of the deep bomb, twelve deep passing touchdowns, and this year he's throwing it short or behind the line of scrimmage on 61% of his attempts, which was nothing like what you saw in that rookie breakout. He is below league average in completion rate in intermediate and short areas. And and you've seen this with Mike Williams, who's gone from the deep ball specialist. You know, he his career average is 16.3 um, yard depth of target, average depth of target, 16.3 yards. Mm -hmm. This year it's 11.9. Um, and so when we look... I know he had the primetime game where he just completely balled out and was like, oh, yeah, I remember how great this guy is, but he's only had three top 12 weeks so far on the season. And so I think with how they are changing his utilization and throwing it short instead of deep, that might be good for the Chargers. But for fantasy, I think it is really taking his big production away. Feels like a, a young Stafford where you have monster games but consistency isn't fully there, and that's kind of what I would expect the rest of the way is kind of a, he's going to have a couple more monster games, but he's not someone that I think you can rely on for a top 10 quarterback finish on a weekly basis. Um, that will have an effect on Keenan. That will have an effect on Mike Williams, which we've seen drop off. And then the last one I want to bring up, the last one that really seemed kind of like an outlier among the entire group of quarterbacks at uh, the NFL level is – a new addition to the NFL, Trevor Lawrence. He's hmm. been very aggressive, which we like for fantasy. I don't yes, care. we do. I don't care about those interceptions. Get down in points. Have to throw the ball Neither more. Neither does he. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but moving the chains, just completing, you know, I don't know, regular old easy passes. Well, first downs are also good. Well, that's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, moving, moving the chains, those first downs, it really, really uh, matters. If Here's the top quarterbacks in first down rate. 
Stafford, Dak Prescott, Mahomes, Kyler, and Brady. You get more fantasy production from the team when you actually move the chains. Trevor Lawrence, only 30% of Trevor Lawrence's pass attempts has ended in first down. That seems if yeah. you, If it seems bad, it is ahead of Jacoby Brissett, okay. Davis Mills, and Zach Wilson. That's it. End of list. So every single week, it's like, why isn't Marvin Jones doing better? He's got the opportunity. He is a talented wide receiver. I feel like I should start Marvin Jones. I feel like he should get in there. Or LaVisca Chenault, he's talented. Here's the reality is Lawrence hasn't been good. Um, there was a red flag in his college production. He had the highest percentage of screen yards among quarterbacks. Oh. Um, he His yards was kind of manufactured for him. So he is failing to hit intermediate and short throws, uh, which is why his wide receivers are failing. So I would be... Looking looking deeper, looking holistically at all this, I am far more hesitant to buy into DJ Moore, far more hesitant to buy into Marvin Jones because of what we're seeing with the quarterback play, which has already been correlating to those wide receivers and, and maddening. Um, but it's good to hear, like, this is a deeper reason why. It's, exactly. you Because there's a lot of times in, in fantasy football, you look at the connection of, like, you're like, this doesn't make sense. This player is good. I... I know, factually, without a doubt, DJ Moore is a great wide receiver. He, yes. you. It, he is. He's good. I watch him on the field. I've seen what he's able to do. So the fact that you're just like, what? what is happening here? And the, knowing that there is a reason why, and it's not just, oh, you can, it's easy to say, oh, this quarterback, he, he stinks. He's playing bad. But like, Let's get deeper into that. Let's. Where is he bad? Yeah. Why is he failing? When you get to the specifics of how and why he's failing and how that compares to the league average, you can see the the kind of the red flags to avoid. And so well, there, there, there they are. One thing that I would add that I think is interesting is I hadn't thought about Trevor Lawrence and Justin Herbert in the same conversation, or Marvin Jones and Mike Williams in the same conversation. But you know. Herbert's a much better quarterback in totality than Trevor Lawrence is at this stage in his career, mm -hmm. which means that Mike Williams' boom weeks are much better than Marvin Jones's boom weeks. But both of those guys have had, you know, Marvin Jones has made plays in, you know, three weeks where he kind of, I don't know, probably overcomes the Trevor Lawrence factor. And Mike Williams has done that as well and had these big weeks, but both of them are very similar in terms of a consistency that is beyond normal wide receiver consistency, at least thus far. So it is pretty, pretty interesting to see it broken down like that. Um, okay. Well, any other things to add there? Nope. No, All right. I, I think that's it. You want to, you want to make sure that you can get a quarterback that, uh, completes well to all four levels of the field if possible. Sure. All right, get up to 100% dandruff protection that's never not working with head and shoulders scalp shield technology available at walmart.com. News and notes from around the league presented by Sleeper. Well, it's been a surprisingly crazy time recently with news. Um, so let's keep that going. Uh, oh, <laughs> yes. Odell Beckham Jr. The saga. The the soap opera, the drama. I mean, it was it, it was kind of like he reached the point where he's ready to drive himself out of town again. Uh, that friendship with Jarvis Landry is so strong that he wants to abandon the team midseason. I mean, he claims he's ready to practice and play, but the team has excused him from practice again today. Uh, the tweets going around yesterday said that Kevin Stefanski spoke to the team. They don't expect him to be with them for the rest of the year. So for fantasy purposes, you're talking about accomplishing a lot for Odell Beckham to be valuable. He needs to either return to the team and be valuable, which we've seen That's not be not the case. That's not going to happen. Or he needs to join another team and become valuable. And the truth is, you know, let's, let's pretend he's released and uh, the Saints decide to sign him. Maybe he's interesting, but you're also dealing with, you know, Jameis is not there. Um, Beckham would be joining a new team. It seems hard to go from where he is now to, to helping your fantasy roster, at least in my mind. And to be clear, like we don't have fully verified reports that Beckham is out for the season for 
the Cleveland Browns. We just we know that like there is uh, disagreements clearly between Beckham and the coaching staff. Uh, you, we have you know some reports now saying that you know, of like the players speaking up saying they they're good if Beckham comes back they can clear the air. We don't know where the coaching staff is with him. They cannot. You you can't keep doing this essentially of like setting as as far as the the way I understand the situation for the NFL, you cannot keep a permanent paid suspension going without full uh agreement from like what's going on in Houston where Watson and the team have agreed that this is what they're doing. So the, if the player, something about it, the player is saying they're going to play not completely clear on what's going on, but something has to happen where either he will be back or he'll be, he will be cut is the way that I'm interpreting the situation. And, and then after that, I mean, I'm, I'm with Andy of, I, I don't really care where Beckham goes right now. I'm not, I'm not seeing this as a fantasy football situation that I'm going to pounce on like, oh, go get Jarvis Landry because his value is about to skyrocket. No, it might stabilize and Jarvis Landry will be a fine addition to your your squad as your wide receiver three or something like that. But maybe Austin Hooper sees an uptick in targets, but there's just there's nothing about this situation that that – there's an exciting outcome for at least one of these fantasy football players to uh, me. Yeah, I, I agree. I think if I had Odell Beckham on my team, I would trade him for anything on the promise that he might get cut and go to a different team and have it be better. Um, you know, if he's cut, he should be going through the waiver wire process. Someone would have to pick up his contract, and maybe that maybe nobody is willing to pick up the contract. But if they are, it's going to obviously start with the worst teams. You know, we talk about the Saints grabbing him that would probably be one of the better situations for him with the news of Michael Thomas being out but they might not get to the Saints you know he uh, I I I would love it so much um and find it so uh hilarious if the two and six Giants uh would scoop him up <laughs> come on baby bring him back home um but yeah I would I would try to get anything for him and I don't expect anything good from Beckham ever again if you if you imagine before the season that I told you Allen Robinson, Brandon Ayuk, Odell Beckham Jr. and Robbie Anderson would be all four would be completely irrelevant and none of them would suffer a season ending injuries. That story no one would have believed. Yeah, if you said they were irrelevant, I would have said, okay, so they got injured. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's not the case. Saquon, negative on a COVID retest on Wednesday, but he's still been placed on the COVID reserve list. I don't know if you guys have more information than I do on this. Um, it's something to monitor. He would be returning from injury as it is. Yeah, I believe this is just basically protocol. He did test positive, even if it was a false positive, which is, is kind of the inclination that it seems like. Um, but you still have to go on the COVID IR. Uh, but just like you said, Andy, I wasn't sure he was playing this week. He's He's been gone for three weeks with the ankle injury, and maybe he's back. But missing practice, um, coming, uh, you know, so, so this is just news to monitor um, and unfortunately gets in the way of clarity on whether he was going to play this week anyways because we don't get to see him at practice, see if he's practicing in full yet. The team might be wise to hold him out this week and then they get the bye, and so we'll we'll figure it out. And it, it obviously means a lot for whether Devontae Booker can be started, which mm -hmm. is a possibility. I'm going to blitz some injury news, a reminder that we do an injury blitz podcast on Friday. Matthew Betts, our, our injury expert, We'll catch you up on everything because there's, in, you know, there's practice reports for Thursday and Friday that matter. CeeDee Lamb popped up with an ankle injury, sprained ankle at practice yesterday, going to be limited today. Um, don't know yet whether or not he's going to be back. Michael Gallup may be back this week. Uh, Blake Jarwin's not going to play. A.J. Green's been placed on the COVID list. So a lot up in the air, you know, and what, what I think about with Arizona facing San Francisco this week is you have A.J. Green on the COVID list. You have DeAndre Hopkins with the hamstring that we don't know if he'll play. So what that says to me is look look in Zach Ertz's direction potentially. He could see more volume this week. Same goes for Christian Kirk or even Rondale Moore if you need a dart throw. Um, Kyler has just stayed off the ankle. He says it's feeling better. I think we all expect him to play, but it could limit his uh, ground game, right? Yeah, yes. it definitely can. Um, I don't I don't expect him to ball out this week. I also think that the Cardinals are going to try, whether they can succeed or not. I think they're going to try to establish it a little bit more. Oh yeah, um, get the run game going. So I would, I would think that Chase Edmonds will get more work and and uh, potentially James Conner as as well. 
Taysom Hill returned to a limited practice. There is no starter that has been named, whether it's Taysom Hill or Trevor Simeon. So you're going to need to monitor that. If Taysom starts, he's starting. It's not, you know, this is a concussion. This is not a, an ankle that could re-injure. Obviously, he could get another concussion, but they're not going to clear him after this many weeks unless they're confident he'll be safe out there. And he would immediately become, as Jason said, a great streaming option with upside because he will run the football. Mm -hmm. Elijah Mitchell, Debo Samuel didn't practice on Wednesday. Elijah. Not worried about Debo, but I am monitoring Mitchell to see if he's going to be able to play. We had thought he'd be back from a previous shoulder injury sooner than he was. This is a rib injury, I believe, and... If he's not out there, it's going to be some combination of Trey Sermon and Jamichael Hasty. Yep, Ma agreed. Matthew Stafford. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just say, uh, yeah, I agree with that. That that some I haste, if if Elijah is out, Jamichael Hasty becomes interesting to me as a dart throw. Yeah, uh, Ma Matthew Stafford didn't practice sore back. Uh, Robert Woods didn't practice foot injury. Both expected to play. Latavius Murray still sidelined. Julio limited in practice and the rest of his career. Dawson Knox remained sidelined at Wednesday's practice. I don't know if we'll see him back this week or not. This one matters because if you look at the numbers, Cole Beasley didn't practice on Wednesday. I don't know if you guys illustrated this on the Monday show because I was obviously out, but Beasley had like 13 targets and Emmanuel yes. Sanders had no catches. Yes. And Beasley, even the week before, I think had seven receptions. So you go from seven to 10 receptions. If he misses... And Dawson Knox is still out. I think you can expect a bounce back from Emmanuel Sanders. I think if Cole Beasley plays and Dawson Knox plays, you can expect a bounce back from Emmanuel Sanders. But you're right that if they are out, he should be uh, a very, very good play. That was just a, a down game. He had four targets, didn't reel any of them in, and you, you just you got you got a goose and move on. It felt really bad. Yes, it did. Because I think I had him in DFS. I have him in Dynasty, and it was like gooses for days. Uh, Christian McCaffrey practicing in a limited fashion. Oh. Do you guys have a uh, oh. a vibe here as to whether or not we expect him back out on the field? We've seen too much over the last couple of years of of uh, him practicing off of injury, not getting onto the field that week yet. Um, so it's really just one of those things I don't think we can predict. We we don't know the nature of the injury, and really, what they're going to do is they're going to they're going to test him and see how the following day is. So it will be Sunday, or you know, late in the week at least before I think we have clarity here. We also might not have Sam Darnold back out there. He's in concussion protocol, extremely limited. We're still waiting for him to clear. Uh, PJ Walker would would start, and honestly, I don't know if that's it's like not. they're they're playing the Patriots. I don't know if it's a difference in your outlook for anybody on that roster. I mean, other than you, you're happy playing the Patriots, regardless. Yes, and uh, it, I don't know if you missed this one, Andy, but the uh, the Texans have reported Tyrod Taylor will start oh, in Week Nine. I did miss that, and um, I mean that's that's a better ceiling for these players. And I know yes. Brandon Cooks is a good matchup. The Dolphins have been vulnerable across the board. So that may have some implications later on yes, as we break down that show. Uh, Corey Davis, doubtful. Tevin Coleman out. And that is the exhausting, exhaustive list of injuries. <laughs> uh, today's news and notes all, always brought to you by Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. Grab the app. Subscribe to that channel faster than every other source. Before we move into the breakdowns of the Fantasy Forecast, I want to thank today's sponsor, Manscaped holiday season is approaching and yeah, look friends help their friends and you got to tell them about Manscaped the absolute best men's products the best grooming products the best hair trimmer on the market you got to tell them well I mean, either you can get them a gift or you just give them the gift of a little bit of a discount and say look right now uh, you can join the two million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with 20% off plus free shipping with the code footballers20 at Manscaped Dot com. They have their lawnmower 4.0. They keep improving the trimmer. Is This is the best one yet. You have the Weed Whacker ear and nose hair trimmer. You have deodorants. You have toners, boxer briefs, a travel bag to hold all of the goodies. I've had Manscaped for years. They've been a loyal sponsor of this show for years. And I like, I like to tell people, like, 
you got to groom. You got to get it tight. You got to get it right. You got to take care of yourself. And yeah, are you a man? Yeah. Manscaped. <laughs> you need to scape. And I don't, You're I don't a man. know what that is. <laughs> your man. I don't know what that means, but we're saying it anyways. Because they have, like, it's that performance package 4.0. Like I said, it comes with all of the things that you need. And right now, get 20% off plus the free shipping with the code footballers20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code footballers20 at manscaped.com. Be thankful this holiday season and get the best gift of all from Manscaped. And we want to thank First Leaf. Anyone who drinks wine knows the options are limitless, which is why finding the right wine sometimes is frustrating or overwhelming or you just go and grab one or you stand in front of the aisle and you just meander around looking like you, acting like you know what you're doing. Um, but in Yes, your, that one looks yes. good. <laughs> But in reality, um, there are experts that know what they're doing, and I like to have them pick my wine for me, and that's who First Leaf is. Uh, I've been a First Leaf Wine Club member for a long time. I only get the wines that I like. They have curated based on my preferences now over time. They're going to send you the box that you think you like the best, and you're going to rate those wines and say what you like, what you don't like. Each box gets better and better. And I love, you know, when you get the box, it comes with a little card describing the wine, telling you what pairings, telling you, you know, the different types and the flavors. Because even when you get that box, it's like I some days I want one type versus another. And those little cards can really help me pick the right one for the night. You can join today, get six bottles of wine for twenty nine ninety five and free shipping. Just go to tryfirstleaf.com slash footballers. That's six bottles of wine for just twenty nine ninety five and free shipping at tryfirstleaf.com slash footballers. Fantasy Forecast. All right, we've got uh, – we had the Thursday night preview on yesterday's show. Let's jump into the Week 9 matchups. Let's begin with Cleveland. Four and four, taking on the five and three Cincinnati Bengals. This is a fun one. Cleveland has a chance to, you know, match the record of the Bengals if they knock them off in Cincinnati here. DraftKings Sportsbook line, Bengals minus two and a half, over under is 46 and a half. Mike, you said it's a fun one. Is that the divisional rivalry that you're talking yeah. about? I mean, look at this division. The Ravens and the Bengals have five wins. The Steelers and the Browns are at four wins apiece. This division is crazy competitive. Yeah, it's about time some other division got into the mess that the <laughs> NFC West has had for years. Yeah. But um you're right, you know, Baker, five and one against the Bengals in his career. At least when he's played them in the past, he's been very good, but you know, this is not the same team. He's not gonna have Kareem Hunt in the backfield, although I think Dearness is a very interesting play just I based agree. on the opportunities he'll be given. And I do have confidence in Landry. I know you said you're not excited, and I, I think that's fair. But, you know, there is a – we talked about when Gruden left, how there is kind of an exhale, and the team, the offense, it functioned differently. Kenyon Drake suddenly was valuable and useful, and the team was distributing the ball to the wide receivers at least a little bit more. There is kind of an exhale, I think, without OBJ on the field. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's that's the best way to put it. It's not that Beckham doesn't have talent anymore. It's that he disrupts the equilibrium of an offense. And Baker – does better without him and he's going to need to he's going to need to throw the football in this game. He's not going to get away with just handing the ball off to to Nick Chubb the entirety of the game. So Landry, dart throw of Donovan Peoples Jones, I think um they're going to, there's going to be somebody in this game I think that surprises on the Cleveland side whether it's Dearness or Landry or or Donovan Peoples Jones. Yeah, I think in the passing game, you're right. Someone will surprise. I I don't want to spend my week or my redraft rosters trying to predict who it's going to be. Maybe take a shot in your DFS lineups where you can get a good value because I think Baker comes through here in this matchup. It's it's a very important game um, for their playoff hopes here, and the freedom of being without Beckham has shown in the past that Baker steps up in that situation. On the other side of the ball. Uh, you have the Bengals who have just shown that they're a, a very good offense. And in this matchup against Cleveland, Cleveland's very good at their run defense. Their secondary has not been that great. It's been getting worse as the season has gone along. So I love Joe Burrow in this matchup. Um, Jamar Chase is a rookie, 
So nobody told him that wide receivers are inconsistent. <laughs> He's like, oh, I just get to do great every game. And we're like, yeah, yeah. Don't yeah, just keep, keep don't, doing it. Don't question it. He has is, is not had a game outside of wide receiver three territory. That's his bad games. Um, so obviously you're going to keep playing him, but T Higgins, T Higgins, yeah, I think has been kind of an unsung hero. Uh, you know, he got injured in the beginning of the year has still not had any massive performances. Um, you know, the last two weeks, wide receiver 30, wide receiver 26. That's a good startable asset, but four he, for 97 last week. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's, that's a good, it's a fine game, but he has not, um, you know, blown the doors off of any uh, fantasy managers, um, to demand attention, but 15 oh, targets got the two door, weeks the ago. The doors are still on. All the it, doors are exactly. still on. So I'm telling you, crack that door open <laughs> so that when he bursts through, it doesn't break. It just opens, mm. and you're ready for T. Higgins to have a good you're game. You're protecting like the hinges exactly. and the frame. The frame is the <laughs> yeah, main okay. problem here. I don't want to have to reframe my house. So crack that door open for T. Higgins. I think <laughs> oh he has a gosh. good game this week. <laughs> what are we doing? He's just tumbling down a hill of – um. Look, Jamar Chase uh, and Joe Burrow may be the closest uh, thing we get to the Calvin Johnson, Matthew Stafford connection. Like in, in terms of multi year go to receiver, the relationship there. I mean, Chase scored last week. He was also targeted in the end zone on other drives. He is just a go to receiver and Higgins just he's a really good player and he's and he's a big guy. And we have him at twenty one this week, ahead of Landry in this game. And um He's a good play, and you're right. It's going to be a fun one to watch. Is there anything else from this matchup you want to focus on for fantasy purposes? Uh, start Nick Chubb if he's on your team. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we'll talk. I don't want to leave that out. We'll talk about Dearness later. Okay. The Denver Broncos at four and four take on the six and one Dallas Cowboys. That gives the Cowboys an implied point total of twenty nine in this one, and um, the DK Sportsbook line is Cowboys minus nine. Over under forty nine and a half. Uh, you know, this is going to, it, it comes down to Dak, right? If Dak is healthy, this game's going to go according to plan. It sounds like he is. It, it sounds like Dak is healthy. I am. It stays healthy, I guess. I mean, when you have a calf sure. injury, there's I, at least in the back of my mind, some concern about, you know, you haven't seen him back out on the field since that play missed a week. Yeah. Well, you had the, re yes. Re-aggravation is definitely, a, uh, it could happen, but you've had, you know, multiple weeks now for Dak to to rest. They were able to sneak one out with Cooper Rush getting a victory against the Minnesota Vikings, so you didn't risk re-injuring Dak there. And like at least the reports we have, like Dak Dak is going to play this week, so I I have more confidence in these. You know, Amari Cooper, Ceedee Lamb is with that with the ankle injury popping up yesterday. We don't have further news on it just yet we don't have today's practice report so th this could be a situation where you're you're happy that you have Amari Cooper to to start and then I, I don't we don't know if Gallup is going to play and like uh, let's uh, let's so let's lay out a couple different scenarios here Lamb is out Gallup is out mm -hmm. Cedric I, Cedric Wilson do, Cedric the entertainer does he does he jump into that dart throw, like not even dart throw, does, does he jump into a flex conversation where in your redraft league you're like, yeah, I'll pick him up off the waiver wire and throw him in? Not for me. He, you know, maybe in a DFS where you're getting the value of the of the salary because he's such a, um, you know, an, a, a non-utilized player. But to me, it's Dalton Schultz. It's a guy who I've been um, saying is about to fall off mm -hmm. because the expectation of Michael Gallup coming back to the team and assuming that Cooper and Lamb are there, but Blake Jarwin didn't practice. So if He's Jarwin is Yeah, exactly. If Jarwin's not playing and Lamb is banged up and we're not sure about Gallup, I, I, I think Dalton Schultz is a fine play this week. I don't love the entirety of the passing game here against the the Broncos though. Because I do expect look, the, the Cowboys are just a better team. They are better than the Denver Broncos. I expect them, if Dak is playing, to win this game. You know, there's there's a nine point spread, and eventually they're going to be running the ball. I think that they could get the lead by running the ball. The passing defense for the Broncos is great, so I'm not going to play around with Cedric Wilson and okay. and secondary options. Amari Cooper, I think, is a great play here. Um, I'm playing C.D. Lamb if he's active, and and Dalton Schultz should be good. But I don't have high expectations for a barn burner in the passing game from the Cowboys. I, 
I completely agree with everything you just said. That's exactly how I see the game going there. Dallas is a very balanced offense and Denver is a very slow offense. And so when you combine those things, you would need, <laughs> you need Denver to do something in this game in order to really push Dak and this, these receivers. Now, Teddy um, and company, you know, Jerry Judy is back. Uh, there's volatility now with a wide receiver room mm -hmm. that is, you know, a predictability standpoint is going to be more difficult. Um, like the Tim Patrick in the waiver wire pickups thing is probably over every single week here. And you still have a 50, 50 split with Melvin Gordon and Javante. I mean, Gordon caught a touchdown pass last week. Um, you know, if you want to look at a DFS dart throw, I think Albert, um, Aguabanon. Aguabanam is an yeah, option. Yeah, Alberto. I, I definitely because uh, right now Noah Fant is uh, likely to miss the game on on the COVID list. It was incredibly disappointing last week for Teddy Bridgewater against Washington. Like that team is their defense is bad, and Teddy Bridgewater, even with the return of Jerry Judy, was only able to put up just over 200 passing yards and one passing touchdown. Uh, so do we? It's another. It it is another strong matchup. So, do you have the confidence in Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy to play them? You know, as wide receiver twos, or is it? Or are they downgraded a little? One bit? of these guys will be very, very good. Um, and I neither I, of them was good last week. No, I right? agree. I agree. But I think that they're going to have to throw the ball. Tr Trayvon Diggs has just been unbelievable for the for the Cowboys. Um, you, you know, you saw him uh, do some work against Justin Jefferson last week. He's great. The question is, is he going to be on Cortland Sutton more or Jerry Judy? I would imagine he's more on Sutton. So I think Jerry Judy's a fine play another week back from the ankle. Um, he was on the field for 72% of snaps last week, but it is is certainly not a guarantee. It's nothing I would uh, stamp with a seal of, of approval of you have to start this guy. I think you can start Jerry Judy. I could see an outcome where he has a really good game. Unless Diggs switches over to Judy, and then Sutton should should be okay because I do think they're one of those two guys will be good, and one of those two guys won't. Jerry Judy or Hunter Renfro? I would go Hunter Renfro without um, Henry Ruggs in a good matchup against the Giants. I I think the baseline is more assured with Renfro. The Houston Texans at one and seven, getting Tyrod back, take on the one and seven Miami Dolphins. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Dolphins minus six and a half. The over under is forty six and a half. We could we could see this game become more fantasy interesting than it seems with two sure. one and seven teams taking each other on. I brought up Tua as a stream this week. He is a very strong play in this game. The Texans defense, um, they are consistent in giving up fantasy points. Lee bad? To, consistent Lee <laughs> bad. Um, so, you know, quarterbacks have smashed against them. Running backs have been great tight ends. It's like an auto, an auto play. Um, so, you know, Mike Gesicki is a lock in this game. He's going to be somebody that even though Jason is right with the addition over time of, of Parker coming back and, and, uh, you know, Jalen Waddle growing up as a rookie and even Will Fuller returning right now, you are staying in the flames with Mike Gesicki, especially mm -hmm. against Houston. Certainly. Um, and then, you know, Miles Gaskin, yeah, I'm going to flex him this week. I'm going to put him in there. You've got four teams on by. He gets 15 opportunities per game, and I'm going to take 15 against Houston. Do you guys agree with that? I do agree with that. They're averaging 24 and a half fantasy points given up to the running back position every week, and you know that a large portion of that's going to go to Miles Gaskin. So I think – this is the week where Gaskin can have 15 fantasy points, and that's that's a wonderful start for a guy like Miles Gaskin. And he's got his own squid game going on with red light, green light, and we are currently on a week. If these trends continue, it's oh, green it's light. Be green. All it's right, green light. like that's the analysis you need. Bad, good, bad, good, bad. Uh, yeah. Good. I mean, what's funny is these teams are both one and zero, so they both lost a combined 14 straight games. <laughs> um. Woof. Someone has to double their wins. <laughs> I'm sure you talked That's about it. That's not true. They could tie. <laughs> this could be a oh, tie. Oh, a tie would be great. 12-12. Uh, um, no, the, the one thing I will bring up briefly is last week people wanted to freak out or, or play David Johnson, Philip Lindsay. Yeah, the answer was Rex Burkhead falling across <laughs> the goal line. And um, we don't need to watch three running backs wrestle for 15 yards. I would not 
play them at all. I mean, like that, it just doesn't make sense to me to go to that well when you have. I will take it a step further. I will not roster them at all because I don't see any situation where I would play them. I, I am not even, I feel like if two thirds were to get injured, I would, I would maybe make the mistake of then playing the only guy left and regret it after playing him. So I, I'm not going to roster David Johnson, Philip Lindsay, or Rex Burkhead. Now, Brandon Cooks is our wide receiver 20 on the week. He does have tremendous upside against yes. the Dolphins defense, giving up 36 fantasy points a game to wide receivers. Yeah, you had, you know, week one is really the only time we've seen a full game of Cooks and Taylor together. And it turned into five for 132. Was against the Jacksonville Jaguars, but it's not like the Miami Dolphins are much better than the Jags right now. Devontae Parker on the other side. Yep. Um, you know, do you like him more or less than Brandon Cooks in this matchup? I'll take Cooks. I will take Parker, but I think it's a toss up. I mean, I I do like both plays. Yeah, I think they're both they're both pretty good this week. Um, you like Parker over Waddle then? Yes, yes, certainly. Okay. The Atlanta Falcons at three and four take on the New Orleans Saints, who are five and two right now. Somehow, um, I, I doesn't it just feel like every week is a grind for New Orleans, but they find yes. a way to get it done. Yeah. yeah, Sean Payton is a great coach. We've we've seen what's happened oh, over the last four or five years when these great coaches lose their uh, star quarterbacks. You know, Pete Carroll coming out and saying candidly, if he didn't have Russell, he wouldn't have he wouldn't have a job still. Um, and here you, you lose Drew Brees and Sean Payton has just completely changed. He's, he's made it into an ugly team that wins games. Yeah. Um, they're doing what they need to do. I think if Taysom Hill, uh, is active, you're going to play him because of the rushing opportunity. Alvin Kamara is just a guarantee. He is the, he's 75% of a mediocre offense and that's enough for me. Uh, outside of that, I mean, there will be probably another touchdown here. I just don't want to try to predict it. I'm not going to put in my Marquez Callaway or Troy Quan Smith or Deontay Harris or Jawan Johnson. It, I, someone, sure, someone's going to get it. I'm, I'm not. I don't enjoy Russian roulette. I feel like the <laughs> yeah. You're not a big it's, fan. It's, it's pretty high stakes. Except the Yelp in, review in, is low. <laughs> right in Russian roulette, you put one bullet in the six chambers right and then you spin it and you get like this is there's one empty bullet yeah in yeah. the six chambers and you're oh, you're trying no. to get that's what it feels like is there so, roulette from other countries that is different oh i don't know maybe like it's just russia like russian roulette really caught on but the other roulettes were yeah, like you don't want to go to the casinos in russia because <laughs> they're very dangerous uh <laughs> i prefer american you roulette. should see their dice game <laughs> oh man um no, you're right, though. The one thing I'll say about New Orleans for looking into the future, they now know, I mean, and we know that Michael Thomas is not returning, and there's a chance Taysom Hill is a better solution for the offense than Jameis was. I mean, we know the pace of play. We know the pass attempts. Not that the pass attempts will go up, but maybe the flexibility, the running game, maybe they're around the goal line more. Maybe Mark Ingram ends up being a flex-worthy second option over the course of the back half of the year. Like, there is... There is a chance that through seven games we haven't seen the best of the Saints' offense. There is a chance now, yeah. Uh, on, the, on the other side, <laughs> I'm like it, there's there is a, there is absolutely a chance, but we've just uh, you know spent a couple minutes, yeah, congratulating Sean Payton for doing such an incredible job, and he's the one who picked Jameis Winston over Taysom Hill, and they're five and two, so oh. you can't really criticize yeah. that. Um, on the other side, it's a it's a really this is like. One of those games you're going to be watching to try to find answers to what the Calvin Ridley-less Falcons look like. This is a very difficult matchup against the Saints. Um, in a divisional game, I think Kyle Pitts is someone that I am more worried of in this matchup because of the ability to roll coverage, too. I mean, we saw it last week um, You know, when, when Stephon Gilmore played against Pitts, I think that the Saints probably take another I mean, because who else are you really trying to guard? Russell Gage? Your Cordero. Third sure, Cordero, but Cordero's more of the gadget guy. He's gonna, you know, as far as the routes run, he's not lining up every single play as a wide receiver. You're gonna have your base defense. So I do worry about that. Cordero 
so you know he he should be fine from a volume standpoint. Um, let me, let me push back for a second because okay. you you talk about rolling coverage to him. You know, Lattimore. I know he's he's an elite corner, but the Saints' defense, by way of stuffing the run, like they give up an enormous amount of fantasy points to wide receivers. So the coverage being rolled to them is the coverage that gives up 35 fantasy points a game. They're 29th in the league. I guess I'm just curious, like, if they're giving up 35, Kyle Pitts, Cordero, Tajay Sharp, these guys have a shot in this game, especially if they're they're at a deficit uh, and behind. Yeah, I mean, I I alternatively to the tight end position, they give up six a game, and so. Um, he is still a tight end. I know they're going to use him as a as a wide receiver, but they have obviously shut that down for most of the league. Um, and I don't know. You know, you say okay, thirty five points on average is what the 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 Saints have given up, but you know, the Saints just played against Tampa Bay, um, and they had Brady, and they had Mike Evans, and they had Chris Godwin, and so they gave up the number one most fantasy points on the week last week. This is. This is Russ. This is a get right. This is Russell Gage and Cordero Patterson and an old Matt Ryan in a in a uh, against a team that you know well in division. So I I so worry put, about the Falcons. We haven't water bet in a little while. So put give me a line for Kyle Pitts and let's see if we can exchange in some uh, in a battle. Okay. Okay. Uh, fantasy points or rank? fantasy finish. I mean, you you have your doubts about him this week. Give me a fantasy finish for, okay, for I, Kyle I, Pitts. I don't I know think it'll he finishes be to in your the top. advantage. No, I'll, I'll, top 10. Uh, I'll go all oh, the way down. To, let's do it. Let's all do right. it. Water bet. Um, Cordero, we all have confidence in starting again. You, you keep him in your lineup, right? Mm, yes. And then are you leaning? If you're, if you're taking the dart throw, which teams are going to have to do on bye weeks, injured players, if you're shooting your shot on one wide receiver from the Atlanta Falcons, his name is? I guess it's Tajay. I would. I think lean, it's Taje. I would lean Russell, but I mean, I I don't think you. I don't think legally you can do that. To me. <laughs> um, go, I can't put you in that position. Of you deciding. can't put me in that position. I mean, Jarvis Landry, or there are plenty of options on the waiver wire. I like more than wide receivers in this. Well, let, let's make it easy because last week, by the way, Tajay Sharp six targets, five for fifty-eight. Um, start a Saints wide receiver or start Tajay, Tajay Sharp. Start a Saints wide receiver I'll, or start Tajay Sharp. I will start Tajay. Tajay. Okay. The long, <laughs> but with a fart sound. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's the only way. That's, <laughs> that's this the is only the way. way forward. Uh, the Las Vegas, the over-under in that game is only 42 points, by the way. So um, definitely, definitely a shot for uh, nobody, nobody to be relevant there. Mm -hmm. um, and the Saints defense to just be figuring it out, like you said. The Raiders at 5-2 and two taking on the 2-6 and six New York football giants the DraftKings sportsbook line Raiders minus three the over-under is 46 and a half um there is a chance that we see Kenny Galladay back in this game is there not Ooh, that would be see I nice. I see I mean, did not practice on Wednesday but I thought he was limited can we vet that to make sure I'm not crazy sure just a moment one moment <laughs> vetting um uh, Kadarius right. Tony was limited, but we expect him back out there. Yeah, this is um, obviously we've we've brought it up. There's there's actually been you know a lot of missed practice. I think the Giants are getting back to practice today, like as a as a team. Um, they the COVID they, breakout. Yeah, they issued a an official statement earlier during our recording um, that I was able to read, and it it talked about that there are a an, a, a high number of false positives from the um, lab that they are using right now and they're working through that but that they were going to resume practice today with those who are able to so I'm not sure if that got in the way of Kenny Galladay uh, practicing but their official injury report says he did not practice on Wednesday gotcha yeah according to uh, Brooksy he initially looked to be limited but was marked a DNP so that sounds like Kenny Galladay's the old pump fake for practice yeah, that's 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 the Kenny G way. Can we can we get the uh Oh yeah, the Can we can we get the the sax Kenny G. performance? Oh. Kenny G sounding sounding I bad. <laughs> I never would have thought that that sax sounded more 
perfectly in tune with the the experience of fantasy players with Kenny G this year, but that is just I don't know. I think he played a little too long for being in oh. tune with Kenny G. It should have been one note and then done. Did not play. Yeah. Um Devontae Booker, you can put him back out there in this matchup if Saquon doesn't play. The Raiders are vulnerable against opposing running backs. And Booker, honestly, he's looked good in the passing game. You know, he he got a lot of fantasy points last week on some dump offs that he that he made plays on. Yeah, Devontae Booker a, was going to be my start of the week, but I I we there wasn't clarity on um on Saquon, but he is a great play. the The matchup is is fine, um, and he's he's not only been decent for fantasy, he has looked good on the field. Like the film, mm -hmm. he he's making plays that aren't just what the O line has given him, and so I I certainly and whew, revenge game. Oh yeah, I mean he. Since taking over as the starter, he's been top seventeen three of the four games. Like he's he's been very serviceable as a backup. Isn't this the new experience of the Giants? You just you you end up finding some. What was it Wayne Gallman last year and Devonta mm -hmm. Freeman for a week and yep. And now it's the Devonte Booker show and it's it, Kadarius yeah, Tony because none healthy. of the other wide receivers. It's just start who's left. <laughs> that's start that's who's what left. You do. The New York Giants. We start who's left. And uh, on the other side, you know, Josh Jacobs is a strong play against the 22nd ranked running D for the Giants. Derek Carr, um, you can you can send him in. He's got 20 yep. plus fantasy points in five of seven games. He has been very solid. And and honestly, again, the exhale, the Gruden exhale, has proved to be like this team looks like they they no longer fit the the narrative every week, right? You're used to what you used to see. <laughs> With John Gruden, which was going to be, we run a little too much. We don't throw the ball to the wide receivers. There's at least a chance we see some emerging performances from a Kenyon Drake, from a Brian Edwards. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously you have the the shocking and, and terrible news of what happened with Henry Ruggs. He's been released. We're going to have to see how that changes the passing game because there's been one or two deep completions a game that have really helped Derek Carr's numbers. Um, you know, when you get a 60-yard bomb, your total yards in the game go up. Uh, when you get a bomb touchdown, your fantasy is great. We'll have to see if someone like Zay Jones goes into that role um, and they keep the deep bombs coming or if they just shift targets more towards a Brian Edwards or if Hunter Renfro just ends up more like a Cole Beasley hyper-targeted, uh, this will be a telling game that we will be watching for some kind of prescriptive information with how the targets break down going forward. All right, anything else from this one you want to talk about? Are you willing to take a flex play of Kenyon Drake or no? I am not. Jason, with the last two weeks being solid, are you interested at all? Uh, I would prefer not to. I still I believe that the Raiders win this game, and I'm sticking to the narrative of the splits where Josh Jacobs in victories um, has always been great and gets the workload. Yeah, I mean last the the last time we saw them, you know, Jacobs uh, knocked out of the game, so we saw opportunities. The two weeks ago, yeah, running back nine on the uh, on the week, incredible fantasy performance. 21% of the snaps and six opportunities in oh that my game. Word. Like that that is called fluke. So I'm I'm out on Kenyon Drake unless we get news that Jacobs is is not actually ready to play. Oh, Which ask me the, about That's Evan. the news you'll get halfway through the game, right? <laughs> sure, that's that's I guess possible. Yeah, the last thing I would say is ask, ask me about Evan Ingram. Uh, what about Evan Ingram? No, I won't start him. You never Darren Waller, um, yes, or Ingram should, should be back. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take Waller. Oh uh, man, Mike, are you interested in the Evan Ingram start of the week again? Or uh, look, the process is not terrible this week. They're the Raiders are twenty seventh against fantasy tight ends, but he is not my streaming tight end of the week. Darn. Um, the the New Look, England. Patri I got. I called it. I got it once. That's all you have to hey, do with Evan Ingram. You you called a top <laughs> ten fantasy finish last week as Ingram started the week. Kudos. That is not easy to do. He's done it once. Yeah, and what, he, he only had fifteen saying. yards. I'm saying you bail <laughs> when you get it right with him, you bail out. Right. How, yeah, your house money for the rest of your career. Yes. Uh, the New England Patriots at four and four taking on the four and four Carolina Panthers. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Patriots minus three and a half. So that, 
you know, they're on the road. They're three and a half point favorites. It tells you everything about the direction of these two teams right now. And the over under is a disgusting 41 points. So, uh, DraftKings expecting a low scoring affair, a run centric affair. I think with, with Damian Harris leading the way, the opportunities have been through the roof and, you know, he is the predictable piece but it's still a really tough matchup. I mean, Carolina has been solid against the run. I do think the Patriots will impose their will here, so I'm not afraid of starting Harris. But, you know, outside of Damian Harris, Hunter Henry? Yeah, maybe. we. It was really exciting last week as Jacoby Myers finally got into the end zone. Mm, that was cool to see. It was a two-point conversion. Oh, still no touchdowns. It was still not a touchdown. Jacoby Myers, the man breaking all statistics, just continues. And like the man, the myth, the legend. Like he is he's a fine ish wide receiver three. If you're what in if full PPR. The game? What, what it, yes, it stop the game, have a whole display. Ceremony. I think they would if it wasn't on the road. But good news, he's not going to get a touchdown this game. Uh, um, is what I'll say for many more weeks. So, uh, but nine targets last week and a full PPR. I think you can start Jacoby Myers. Um, I I am fascinated because um, Damian Harris. They're, they're going to run the ball. That that's they're It's exactly word for word what you said. They're going to impose their will. They're not going to pivot off of that and say, well, they're good at stopping the run, so we're going to pass it a lot. They're going to say, we're going to beat them. I don't know that they will. I'm not convinced that they will just succeed against the Carolina, um, you know, the front four there. Uh, so I, I'm i just going to be fascinated to watch this one. I'm still starting Damian Harris because he's been on an absolute tear. He's on fire. NBA Jam rules say you start him. Um, I think the opportunities have been there so much for Chuba – that I'm starting Chuba or obviously Christian McCaffrey if he plays. Um, and I think DJ Moore is the last player I will throw into a lineup just because of his personal talent, his ability to have yards after the catch. If uh, PJ Walker gets him on a screen, he could still make something happen. If, I mean, really, is PJ Walker that much worse than Sam Darnold? I don't really care who plays quarterback. Do, do you have. Uh, the situation with Christian McCaffrey, we still don't know if he's playing or like we're, we're still, you know, getting the news on that. If he does play, do you look at this and think perhaps Christian McCaffrey will see a limited amount of snaps? Not that you aren't starting McCaffrey, but I'm saying, do you take the chance and play Chuba? No. Okay. You just, no. it's, it's one or the other. Even if they limit McCaffrey, it's going to be, which they should it's going to be limited to 70% of the snaps, okay. which is a huge limitation for him. So, I, um, no, I, I would not play a backup in this matchup. The The Patriots defense has been very good. This could be a, a slog and not a fun game fantasy-wise for either side, for sure. And, uh, you know, you got to get DJ Moore in there and uh, hope and pray because the more that – Caroline's <laughs> taking the yeah. ball out of same Darnold's hands because they know what it means to put it in it. So, um. Let's get into our starts of the week. Starts of the week. Mike, why don't you kick us off? All right, at the quarterback position. Uh, this week was it's tough for starts. I mean, I was last to the the document, so uh but like these the typical starters, there's no one where I'm like this person's going to absolutely smash this week. So I'm sticking with Taysom Hill because he did return to practice, and if Taysom Hill plays, I just want to reemphasize, you play him for fantasy football. The matchup is there against Atlanta last year in his four starts. Taysom Hill averaged 53 rushing yards. He was never under the 30-yard mark. Four rushing touchdowns in his limited time as a starter. And, like, he will do what he has to do. Uh, like, he's not a pocket guy. So he will use his athletic ability, and I think that if he starts – He's right in, off the waiver wire, into your starting lineup. Yeah, and I'm going to go with Joe Burrow at home against Cleveland. The first month of the season, Joe Burrow was the quarterback 17, someone that you regretted drafting if you did draft him. If you picked him up after that point or traded for him, we were talking about that a couple weeks ago, is that it looked like he was coming into form. You want him on your roster. Over the last month of the season, he has been the quarterback four. Um, over the last month, Cleveland's pass defense has 
soured, allowing the second most fantasy points to quarterbacks over that same time span. And the Bengals also throw inside the 10 more than any other team in the NFL, 68%. I think Joe Burrow's just a, a great play. I don't know how he doesn't throw for at least two touchdowns. And uh, the, the matchup is so great because Cleveland is good against the run, and, and so they'll have to go away from Joe Mixon, and they'll find success doing so. I'm going to go with Tua. Tua is taking on Houston. Bullet point number one for this <laughs> End this of pick. story. It's Houston. Like, they've given up top 12 performances in five of eight weeks to quarterbacks, uh, including Trevor Lawrence. And Tua's in a groove. I mean, give credit where credit is due. In his last three games, he's mm -hmm. on 4,600 yard, 34 touchdown pace. Tua is, he's got Devontae Parker back. He has weapons, and he's found a way to get the ball into the end zone with those touchdowns. So, it's not going to stop against Houston, and I think you can put him right in there. My running back start of the week is Zach Moss. In his previous three games, he has seen targets of four, four, and seven. He is, st and with those targets, he is averaging sixty plus percent of the running back carries. And the Buffalo Bills are playing the Jacksonville Jaguars. I think that Zach Moss is in a very safe position as a running back, too. Yeah, I looked at Zach Moss uh, as a start of the week this week as well. I like that pick. I'm going with Josh Jacobs against New York. Coming off the bye, he was back at practice, and he's as good a bet as anyone to get in the end zone. He's played in five games. He's got five rushing touchdowns. The Giants have allowed the fifth most rushing yards, third most, third most yards per play in the NFL, and over – the last month they're they've thirsty. gotten the thirsty. They're so thirsty. Uh, the Giants have gotten even worse. They're allowing the six most running back uh, fantasy points over that time span, and they're still two and a half point road favorites. I talked about it in the matchup, but I, when when the Raiders win the game, uh, Josh Jacobs is a great fantasy play. So uh, I'm firing him up. And I'm going to get a little risky here. I'm going to go with Dearness Johnson okay. of the of the Cleveland offense here. I know it's terrifying. Let let me remind you, last week the, the Cincinnati Bengals gave up 45 points to the Jets running back room. 45 points to a combination of Michael Carter and Ty Johnson. I know Dearness is going to get 10 opportunities, and I think if the Browns take control of this game, which is possible, he may see 15. And it's risky, but I think if you need a flex, an emergency start, you've got Kareem Hunt waiting for you and Dearness Johnson this week. So... I'm going to go out on a limb here and, and try to start him. My wide receiver start of the week, I think this is a Brandon Cooks week. The Miami Dolphins have given up top 12 points to fantasy wide receivers in four straight games. Tyrod Taylor is back. Uh, I look for that connection to continue. Uh, at wide receiver, I'm going with Robert Woods. I know he missed practice on Wednesday. I completely think that that was just a veteran's day of rest. So monitor it as uh, the week goes on. If he just, plays, he's getting watered. <laughs> yeah, uh, you gotta you gotta keep those woods healthy and and uh, oh, fertilized. I see. It was a joke about the woods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bobby okay. trees. Uh, he's getting Bob watered. Bobby trees. It, it's the highest over under <laughs> of the week. You know, you want a piece of the Rams offense, Tennessee is allowing the highest wide receiver target share in the NFL, the most fantasy points to the wide receiver position. Um, this is a confidence play. Bobby Woods got off to a terrible start to the season, and everybody freaked out, myself included. But since week four, he's the wide receiver eight. He's also seeing high-value targets that we want for fantasy. Inside the 10, Cooper Cup with eight targets, Robert Woods with seven targets. Against Tennessee, I think uh, he's got to be in your lineup. He was the last straw player that, that ended up redeeming himself compared to the others. The one What's, Robert. <laughs> yeah, the one Robert that survived. What's funny is uh, you guys were, you guys had all your starts of the weekend before I did, and um, I, I looked at wide receiver, and I said, my start of the week is going to be Robert Woods and Brandon Cooks. And then I go to the dock, <laughs> and sure enough, you've picked Robert Woods and Brandon Cooks. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the stack with Tua here. Devontae Parker, Houston's giving up. Mike, are you ready for this? Yep. 55 points last 55! week. Um, we, we know the Houston narrative, but Parker here, here's the, the truth. He looked very solid in his return. He was a top 24 wide receiver last week against the bills defense. I think he's top 25, uh, this week against Houston with, with a lot of upside. And, uh, he's going to be part of that to equation for sure. Like Devonte Parker, you know, even over the first three weeks of the season, it didn't work out incredibly for fantasy football, but he has seen no fewer than seven targets in a game like Devon Devontae Parker is incredibly sneaky and it's possible that he is still even after waivers ran he might be chilling on your waiver wire and I think that you should prioritize picking him up 
All right. My tight end stream of the week. We're going back to Jared Kuk. Jared Kuk. Jared Kuk. Oh, you got a lot of Kuking over there. I'm Good Kuk. yuck. Kuking by the Buke. He's seeing five targets a game, and the matchup is there. Over the past three weeks, the Eagles have been giving up the most points to the position. So I'm trusting the process, and I think that Jared Cook is a fine streamer this week. And at tight end, I, I oh look, yeah, baby, I love Conklin this week. Tyler Conk. Conklin, Conk Conk, baby. Um, <laughs> look, the last two weeks, if you look at his fantasy finish, you go, okay, he was the tight end 13, the tight end 15. Garbage. He destroyed you. Except that's not the truth. Those games were 8.2 and 8.6 fantasy points and half PPR scoring. A tight end off the waiver wire, that yep. is fine. Tight end's basements are zero. Uh, he had three for 71 and five for 57 on seven targets last week. That does not kill you off the waiver wire, and that's without a touchdown. He gets in the end zone. He has a great week. I mean, this last week alone, just one week, Kyle Pitts, Dalton Schultz, Tyler Higby, Noah Fant, Hunter Henry, Ricky Seals-Jones, they all scored sub three fantasy points. Conklin is involved, and he gets Baltimore, who is the third worst against the tight end position. In fact, there's only been two games this entire year they haven't given up top 12 total weekly scoring to the fantasy uh, tight end position. So I, I think Conklin is a really safe, like, 50 yards and five reception type of player who has a good opportunity to get in the end zone, and he's available on your waivers. Well, I'm going to go with, uh, you know how sometimes uh, these rockets, these SpaceX rockets, we all tune in and we're, we've got the live stream on and then they're like, ah, we're not going to launch today. We're going to launch next week. Mm -hmm. That's where we're at with Dallas Goddard and he's my start of the week. I think it's time for launch. We've had to wait a little bit since Zach Ertz departed, but the Chargers, that's who he's facing. They're 29th against opposing tight ends. He led the Eagles in receiving last week, six for 72 I think it's a top five tight end this week with number one overall upside in a game where, you know, they're going to have to throw the ball a little bit more than they did last week. And hopefully Dallas Goddard can give you what you hoped for when Zach Ertz departed. In the two games without Zach Ertz, Dallas Goddard has 70 receiving yards in both. And this past week, <laughs> like it was a wild game, but this one's really funny. Do you guys know what his target share was? I do not. 44%. Wow. <laughs> it was a wacky game. It was, it was just such a wacky game. Um, I, I also have to speak to something Andy said that really uh, kind of upset me. Okay. Um, he said it was time for launch, and I just got starving. That oh, is not, not you, lunch. Yeah. yeah, and that's not fair. When you say it's time for launch, this man's got to eat. <laughs> it's time for lunch. It's time for lunch. <laughs> All right. snack, you, you need to get your snack count up, buddy, oh, so, it's you can, always so you can 100. endure. Jason, are you ready for... <clears throat> Me, me, me. Last week. Let's go. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. Clothed aboard the rig, I was taken to the brig by the ship's commanders. I was booed, then tattooed. With the face of Miami's Jason Sanders. <laughs> the rhyming was that you didn't even just go with a uh, no. We had some internal rhymes. Normal. Yeah, yeah. Just you wait wow. for the finale in week seventeen. The rig and the brig, and I mean. <laughs> Eventually, the kicker's coming out of this equation. There's not going to be a kicker in this story. Good. That's what you should do in your fantasy <laughs> leagues as well. Ooh, if y'all okay. haven't, if maybe you're new to the fantasy footballers and you just know me as a kicker expert, because obviously <laughs> I am. Yes. Please understand, I hate the kicker position. It shouldn't be in fantasy. It shouldn't be in your league. Get rid of it. But in the meantime, get a tattoo of Jason Sanders for this Oh, week. my gosh. Wonderful. No, that was that was solid. Uh, the writers are doing good work. We want to thank Pristine Auction for supporting the show right now up on pristineauction.com. C.D. Lamb signed Cowboys logo football is up there. The price right now, $52.50. That ends on Tuesday. There's a Russell oh. Wilson. Russell Wilson and Marshawn Lynch signed Seahawks oh. logo football. Um, Both of them? Yeah, get beast mode. Heck yeah. 63 bucks. That ends on Tuesday. Hundreds of sports memorabilia auctions at uh, pristineauction.com. And the code is BALLERS if you want a $10 credit. Gentlemen. What a pleasure. It's, it's been a wonderful time. 
It has. It's Thank time you. for launch. <laughs> oh, it is time for launch. We Let's will go. be go getting uh, some launch. Uh, Thank you for joining the show. Jointhefoot.com if you want to get in on, on this week's bonus episode. That'll go out later today, or we'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.